Hey guys, what's going on? James here. Happy Easter to everybody. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about my official Tampa Bay Buccaneers 7 round mock draft 3. Point oh, I know I said that I was going to have this out yesterday. I got busy, wasn't able to get it out yesterday, but we are going to be able to get this out today. And I'm very excited for this mock draft. This is one of my more favorite mock drafts that I have made so far up to this point. I know we still have a couple of more to go still, but I really do like this mock draft. Hopefully you guys do as well. Nothing has changed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft picks since the last mock draft that I made. They still have a first, a second, a third, a fourth, and two seventh round draft picks. So let's just dive right in and get started. With the Buccaneers first round pick, pick number 27, I have them selecting Kenyon Green, interior offensive lineman out of Texas A&M, 6'4", 323 pounds. This continues the theme that you've been seeing in the first couple of mock drafts that I've made. That theme being, hey, invest early in your interior offensive line because you have a need there, right? Starting left guard. And yes, whatever rookie is brought in is more likelier than not going to be competing with guys like Aaron Stinney and probably Robert Hainsey as well for that starting guard position. But I think if the Buccaneers were to invest early in their interior offensive line, it would definitely help out overall in terms of solidifying that unit. And Kenyon Green, I think, would be a solid option here in round number one. Again, six foot four, 323 pounds. Big guy, right? There's a couple of big guys that were selected here in this mock draft, Green being one of them, you look at what Green is able to do in that interior offensive line. He's a pretty nasty blocker, if I'm being honest with you. He's good at pass blocking. He's good at run blocking. He's got a good, well-rounded repertoire to his game in that guard position. And I really think that he would slot in well between guys like Donovan Smith and Ryan Jensen, and I think he would be able to beat out guys like Aaron Stinney and Robert Hainsey for that starting left guard spot, which is why I have the Buccaneers selecting him in round number one. They would get a starter right away in the first round of this draft who would be able to contribute, and I think contribute in a big way, right off of the bat in their rookie season. Kenyon Green, Interior offensive lineman out of Texas A&M is who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting in round number one. In round number two, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting with the 60th overall pick, Trey McBride, tight end out of Colorado State. Six foot four, 246 pounds. Trey McBride is one of my top four guys in this tight end class going into this upcoming NFL draft, right? You have Trey McBride, you have Greg Dulcich, you have Jeremy Ruckert, you have Jelani Woods. This is in no particular order, by the way. And Trey McBride's in that group before, right? I think that all four of those guys are going to be very solid, very good tight ends in this league, starting as early on as their rookie seasons, by the way. But right now, you know, with the draft experts and everything along those lines, a lot of them have Trey McBride ranked as the number one tight end in this draft class. And it's not hard to see why Trey McBride offers so, so much as a starting caliber tight end. Much like I've talked about with some of the other tight end prospects, McBride can block very well. I think he's one of the best blocking tight ends in this draft class, him and Jeremy Ruckert. He can catch very good as well. We saw him at Colorado State do some very, very good things with the football in his hands. He didn't get too, too many opportunities, unfortunately, because Colorado State likes to run the football a lot. But when McBride did get those chances, he really did well. And I think that his athleticism with his blocking ability is something that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could use, not just in the immediate sense, because as I've said with other tight end prospects, if Rob Gronkowski does come back, any guy the Buccaneers would draft would be a number two tight end in their rookie season. That's just how things would be. But McBride, I think, is also one of the you know, top tight ends who would be ready to be a potential starter if the Buccaneers needed him to be right off the bat. Him, Rutger, Jelani Woods, Greg Dulcich, all of those guys I think could be starters in their rookie seasons and perform very well. I have Trey McBride here because I think that, 
he could possibly be available around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft pick, and I've selected some other tight ends in the past. I wanted the Buccaneers to invest early in this mock draft at the tight end position because things are still very, very murky in regards to Rob Gronkowski and what his future is going to be with this team, so... Uh, I have them taking Trey McBride here, arguably the top-rated tight end prospect here in this draft in round number two. In round number three, pick number 91, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Cam Taylor Britt, cornerback out of Nebraska, 5'11", 196 pounds. This continues the theme that we've been seeing in some of my previous mock drafts where, hey, you've also got to invest in that cornerback room. Yes, you have Logan Ryan, who you signed from free agency. Yes, you brought back Carlton Davis. You have Jamel Dean. You have Sean Murphy Bunting. But... Jamel Dean, Sean Murphy Bunting, their contracts are expiring after this year, and you're going to need to find possibly two, you know, I would say at least one replacement for one of those guys, if not both of them eventually. So Cam Taylor Britt, I see him slotting in here in the third round, and I think that is a solid, solid pick. He gives you a lot of good zone ability, which the Buccaneers do run a lot of zone. He's good at pressing ability. He's a physical corner. 5'11", 196 pounds is still pretty good size, in my opinion. And I, I think Taylor Britt just gives you a lot of versatility at that cornerback position, which Todd Bowles loves to see in his defenses. He could be an eventual starter next to a guy like Carlton Davis, or if you decide to say, keep Carlton Davis, keep Jamel Dean, I think that Cam Taylor Britt could, could uh, be placed in that slot cornerback role and thrive in those opportunities as well. I think anywhere you put this young corner from Nebraska, I think he would have a very good chance to succeed and grow and develop into a very solid, capable cornerback in this league, especially in a defense like Todd Bowles that I think caters very well to the style of play that we've seen from Cam Taylor Britt back in his time at Nebraska. And hey, you know what? There is a connection with Jason Light. Jason Light graduated from Nebraska. He likes drafting Nebraska guys. There's a Nebraska guy right there who is very good. So it all lines up perfectly in my opinion. Cam Taylor Britt, cornerback out of Nebraska, is who I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting in round number three. In round number four, I am finally selecting an interior defensive lineman. We have John Ridgeway out of Arkansas, 6'5", 327 pounds, selected with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' fourth round pick, selection number 133. And John Ridgeway is a big, big man, 6'5", 327 pounds. I told you guys we were going to have some beef in this mock draft, and John Ridgway is some beef. And I know people may be mad because aside from my first mock draft, I haven't done a ton in these mock drafts to invest in that interior defensive line, which is definitely in some need of investment. They do have Vita Vea, they do have Will Golson, they do have Rakeem Nunez Rochez, and some other pieces there along that defensive line. But Sue not being re-signed yet is a massive hole along that defensive line. And I'm not going to say that John Ridgway would automatically be the starter and do fantastic for the Bucks, but I think at the very least he would give you a very big, very good developmental guy in round number four. I think that he could be very versatile. He could play nose tackle, he could play defensive end, and I think that he'd be able to do both of those positions well. He could learn behind Vita Vea. He could learn behind Will Golson. If the Buccaneers do bring back Ndamukong Sue, he could learn behind him as well. And I think Ridgeway has the tools and has the ability to grow into an eventual starter for this team. Right off the bat, you're going to get phenomenal run blocking. Ridgeway is a big man, and he can stuff the run. We've seen it time and time and time again in his play at Arkansas. And he does have the ability and the athleticism, I think, to develop some pass rushing capabilities. And he could learn those things from, you know, fellow big men like Vita Vea and Ndamukong Sue if he comes back. So I think in the case of Ridgeway, you're not going to be getting a guy who you probably expect to be a starter right away. He maybe could be a starter right away if you absolutely wanted him to be or needed him to be. But I think the appeal to Ridgeway here in round number four is you're going to have a developmental guy 
who is going to grow into, I think, a very solid, well-rounded, big guy on that defensive line who fits well into what Todd Bowles likes to do on defense. I think one of the first things, first and foremost, for this defense is that they love to stop the run. Hey, Ridgeway can already do that. So you can take him and possibly put him in rundown situations right off the bat, have him kind of pick and choose his moments whenever he gets into the game. And you can continue to work on other aspects of his game, like his pass rushing abilities, until he is ready to be a full-time starter for this team. Maybe replacing a guy like Will Golston, maybe replacing a guy like Ndamukong Sue if they bring him back, or replacing another veteran if the Bucks aren't able to bring back Ndamukong Sue. Would not surprise me if they were to bring in another veteran defensive lineman. And Ridgeway would be the future successor to one of those guys along that defensive line. And I think he would do a good job as a future starter for this team. Which is why I have him being selected here in round number four in this Buccaneers mock draft. Finally, guys, for the last two seventh round draft picks in round number seven, pick number 248. First name I have here, Jeremiah Moon, edge defender out of Florida, 6'6", 250 pounds. He actually did have a meeting recently with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I believe it was a local uh, type of workout that was done with a lot of different prospects. But Jeremiah Moon was there. And, you know, with Moon, it's going to be a developmental guy, right? He's got size, 6'6", 250 pounds. And I think that, of course, he'd be competing for a backup role. You have Joe Tryon still here. You have Anthony Nelson still here. Maybe they bring in somebody else. Carl Nassib's out there in free agency. Jason Peter Paul is out there in free agency. But you can have Moon be a developmental guy. Maybe you put him on the practice squad in year number one. Maybe he is a backup in year number two, something along those lines. But what I like about Moon is his athleticism and his overall size. Is he a little bit raw as a prospect, as a pass rusher? Yeah, you know, most guys in the later rounds are, but... I think with the coaching staff that's in place, Larry Foote, you know, especially being, I think, a really, really good coach for developing, you know, young pass rushers. We've seen, you know, very good success from guys like Carl Nassib, from guys like Anthony Nelson. Joe Tryon had a successful rookie year, in my opinion. Uh, even veterans benefited, right? Shaq Barrett had, you know, career years after he came to the Buccaneers. Jason Pierre-Paul had great continuity despite all the injuries that he had once he came to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think that you could grow and develop a guy like Moon and just continue to see what he can offer as a potential backup somewhere down the line. He could also possibly provide some depth on special teams as well, which I know a lot of people have been clamoring about that special teams has not been good enough. I think Moon could contribute there as well. So I like this pick. You know, it adds more to the pass rush. It adds more to the special team's depth. And, and overall, it's just a developmental guy at the seventh round spot there, which I think is always good. And then finally, for the last seventh round pick here, pick number 261, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going with another player out of the state of Florida. Devontae Price, running back out of Florida International, six foot one, 210 pounds. I had to fit a running back somewhere in there. And I didn't do it early this time. I got it in the later rounds. And, you know, I think with Price, again, much like in the case of Moon, this is a guy who's going to be a developmental guy on the offensive side of the football. Kind of similar to how Raymond Calais was a couple of years ago. Maybe a guy you end up putting on the practice squad. A guy who's got some return ability, which, again, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers might need, depending on how they view Jalen Darden moving forward. And who knows? Maybe Devontae Price could be a guy who develops into a solid backup running back maybe he would have some type of role in year number one we don't know but I think at the very least Price would be a guy who would be a solid special teamer a potential option as a returner and a guy that you could stick on the practice squad a running back that you could grow and develop maybe call up from time to time if there's a nagging injury something along those lines I think Price could come into a game and give you a couple of solid snaps and then you know kind of go out of the game and give some of the other guys breathers right that's kind of the role I would see for Devontae Price in year number one. And then after that, maybe he grows into something in the following years of his rookie deal. But, you know, with these two seventh round picks, it's always going to be about depth. It's always going to be about special teams play and, and guys who you hope can grow and develop into something later on, right? So I think that that's kind of the path that I took here. In this mock draft of getting both a guy on defense and a guy on offense as well that can grow and develop into something later on. But with that, folks, this is this mock draft.
You know, I, I think that this was a very good mock draft. You got a starter, I think, in my opinion, and Kenyon Green in round number one in the interior offensive line. You assume he'd be starting at left guard. You got a possible starter in Trey McBride out of Colorado State at the tight end position if Rob Gronkowski doesn't come back. You got a great developmental corner in Cam Taylor Britt out of Nebraska in round number three, who would, in my opinion, be a starter in as soon as year number two. You've got John Ridgway, who I think could be an eventual starter for this team and fits very, very well with Todd Bowles' defense. And then you've got two developmental guys, one on defense, one on offense, in the case of Jeremiah Moon and in the case of Devonta Price. That would possibly grow and develop into something else later on. So, all in all, I'm happy with this mock draft. I know people may be upset and say, James, you're not investing enough in the defensive line. Folks, we still have a lot of moves that can be done before and after the draft to solidify this defensive line, and you can bet that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to do so. I'm happy with this mock draft, all the picks that I made, especially the Ridgeway pick. I think that that is a very solid pick in round number four, should he be available for the Buccaneers pick. In all in all, you know, I think that I did a good job addressing a lot of what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers needs are as of today. But maybe you guys disagree. What do you think about this mock draft? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. Do you agree with a lot of the picks that I made or do you disagree? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always guys, goodbye for now and go bucks.